Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.net and here we are back again with another little bit of a tutorial. We're going to continue on with the whole point to click series and we're going to add in Unity's basic navigation as far as navigation mesh and we're going to go ahead and look at some basic pathfinding. So we'll go ahead and we'll start it up. Now it's just like before, we'll go ahead and we'll click anywhere we want. I've got the little line on the top here for our debug and let's say we want to go through these walls. Well, instead of actually going through the walls, he does actually roll around them. So he automatically navigates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the script and see how this is done. So we'll pause it. I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the components just so we can build it from the ground up. And let's jump into the script. All right, so it's pretty similar to before. Some of the change that we made, we went ahead and did the require component. Uh, simply because when we put this on our player, we know we need nav mesh. I am going to be accessing that nav mesh. So I want to make sure that nav mesh is there. If for some reason we forget to add it, the script will add it for us when we add the script to the component. Now we're still going ahead and saving the target position as a vector three. And I'm still using the constant left mouse button just as a more visual descriptive way to show what button we're clicking. And I'm going to need to get a reference to our nav mesh agent. So I'm doing that up here as well. When we come down to the wake, this is where I actually like to go ahead and reference all the other components that I need to reference. And as such, I'm just telling agent to go out, find the component nav mesh agent and assign it in. During the start, we're going ahead and taking our target position and we're setting it to our current position. So wherever we start, that's our target position. And now that we come down to update, as you know, this is a lot less code here. When we come down to update, we're still going ahead and taking a look to see if they press the left mouse button or if they're holding the left mouse button down. And if they are, we're going to get that position that they're actually holding it down. Let's come down here. Now this hasn't changed from the last time, except for the fact that I'll get rid of the toggle. We don't really need the toggle anymore. But we're still doing the same thing. We're going ahead projecting this plane from where we're standing. And we're going ahead creating a ray and finding out the position of that ray according to our mouse position then we go ahead we make a float we're going to go ahead and use that ray and see if it intersects that plane if it does we're going to take out a point on that intersection then we're going to go ahead and cast that point into our vector 3d which we go ahead and store into our target position and of course we come back up here and i'm just always calling move player now and if we come down here all it does is tell our agent to go ahead and set the destination to our target position. And I am still drawing that little red line out. We don't really need it. You know, you really you could just move that line up here into the update. Or you can keep the toggle and say, hey, you know, if I'm, I'm already there, don't bother moving. But I've gone ahead and tried to simplify the script just as much as possible. Not really very many lines of code. It's a very good basic example. Let's go ahead and put it back together and take a look at how everything got put together. All right, to start off with, I've gone ahead and taken the ground. I've made it static. And all of these walls I've added here, I just made one and just cloned it. I've gone ahead and made those static as well. Then I just went and scattered them around. I threw them under an empty game object just so it didn't take up so much room in my hierarchy here. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and select the ground. I'm gonna come over to the navigation tab. If you don't have that, you can come up to the top. Go ahead, go to window. Select navigation, mine's already open, you might get a pop-up, just drag and drop it and dock it wherever you want. With the ground selected, uh, we have some options here. I'm not really going to go over a whole lot of the navigation system, simply because we have a series on that coming up for the hack and slash series. But I left everything the basics. Basically, what you're looking at is, you know, this is your character. Uh, how high of a step can it do? What high, how, how high of an angle it can go and still be able to go up it? You can go ahead and change these variables here if you really want. I'm just going to leave everything as it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit bake. And you'll notice you get this little blue overlay on your ground. That shows all of the spots that your character can walk on. And if we notice, there's a little bit of a, a fringe around all these other static objects. And that's how much room he'll leave when he's going around walls. And of course, you can actually change that a bit. If we go ahead and look at the player here. I'm going to go ahead and drag that script back on our player movement nav mesh script right here, the new one. We go ahead and drag that on and we see that we get it. 
Uh, we no longer have our speed because that's controlled now by the nav mesh agent. And if we go ahead and open that up, I'm going to zoom in on him. The first few variables here are the agent size. Think of it as a collider around him. And by default, it's going to fit him pretty snugly like a glove. You might need to adjust these. You know, the radius is just you know, how much around it does. Height is uh, how high it is. And then you have the base offset if you want to lift it up a bit. Uh, the next thing is your steering, basically how fast you want to go around. The speed moves faster, angular speeds, you know, how fast it moves while turning, acceleration, how fast acceleration, stopping distance, auto braking. Uh, these are all well documented on the Unity site. I'm actually going to leave everything at the default for him. Uh, zoom out just so we can see a bit better. We'll start it back up. And there we go. Everything should be fine. Let's go over here. He decides to go that way. And everything's pretty good now. Before he did move faster, uh, I can't remember exactly how fast we made it. You'll just have to leave it running and kind of play with these variables, see exactly how fast you want it. Angular speed. Uh, let's bring that down to, I don't know, about 25. Acceleration, I want to bring that up. We're about 100, we'll leave stopping distance at zero. And there we go. That's much faster. That's probably a little too fast. But you get the idea. Season to taste, right? Well, anyway, there you go. There's how we get the basic navigation that comes with Unity. He's built into Unity, working with our little point and click demo. And uh, hope you guys find it helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.